Hello there. Welcome back to the Game of Thoughts Opinions channel. And today, by recommendation by Alex O, Alex O Face, he uh, recommends to talk about our top five favorite rappers, um, not of all time, because lists should not be of all time. These things are transient. It's art. You sh you should be able to change your opinion. Uh, and I feel after like after I say this list is probably gonna change again. But oh, definitely. Here it is. Top five favorite rappers. You wanna go first? Uh, you wanna no, go like five, four, three. Oh. Sure. All right, I'll go five then. Number five for me is Lupe Fiasco. He is a, a socially conscious rapper, but he's more known for like the stuff that's just like regular rap. Like his notable songs that got popular, like Kick Push, um, The Show Goes On. Um, that's really it, like this mainstream stuff. But I like uh, probably the best social rap a song I ever heard was called uh, American Terrorist. And I recommend you go listen to that. It's pretty pretty powerful. And uh, not a notable song is real. It's a nice song to listen to. Before I, before I guess I go on for all the rappers, I got I got like four or five notable songs that I like, like my favorite songs from them. So you can go listen to that if you're interested. So yeah, Lupe Fiasco. Send me that list so I can like put links in the description and stuff. All right, and Lupe Fiasco, pretty good solid rapper. Came out with an album this past year. You know, wasn't great. Like most rappers, I think their first and second albums are the best because that's when like the most emo emotionally charged like stuff they put out. Why are you smiling at that? You're gonna dislike one of my uh, choices then. Okay, well that's that. Okay, what's your number five? My number five. Okay, so quick disclaimer. My dis the way I make a distinction between rap and hip hop mm -hmm. is not. I mean, rap is a part of hip hop culture, and a lot of these songs are considered rap songs by people even if they're not like the songs that i listen to are considered rap songs if they're not by people that are like always rappers are the songs rap themselves that you yes, like the songs are rap but the artists aren't always rappers. No, I mean, that's fine that's fine okay contains multitudes i appreciate that yeah uh hollywood undead is my number five never heard of it i've yeah are they i guess are they popular or not i'm just like under a kind rock kind of something? popular what are they known for um, you mean like songs? Yeah. Uh, there's one song that I'm thinking of called Lump Your Head. Is this like a recent, like, like are they new or old? They're kind of oldish, maybe. Hmm. I don't know. This, this list was hard for me to make because I don't listen to like a lot of like straight rap. Mm hmm You know? Oh, I can give you the last <laughs> Don't worry about that. Uh, but I, I don't listen to like Tupac and Lil Wayne and... That's fine. You know, a lot of the big rap stuff. Um, so it's a lot of, like, hip-hop rap crosses. I don't or rap, like, rock rap sort of thing. Ooh, we'll get to that later. Yeah, we'll get to that next <laughs> second. All right, you do no your number four next, then. Uh, Outcast. Outcast. They yeah. might be my number three. They're up there. I, it fluctuates, like Mark said. What's your, uh, what's your favorite songs from them? So Fresh, So Clean mm -hmm. uh, is pretty good. Hey Ya, of course course because mm. it was one of the most popular songs of all time yeah and what else that's really all i can think of off the top of my head i didn't put a whole lot into this okay that's fine well outcast is on my list though not number four though number four is notorious big or biggie smalls he's good he's a fantastic storyteller uh his beats are pretty good uh it's too bad he died early he seemed like right when he started to like reach his peak uh like he died because uh we never like for most rappers like some rappers i get to later like jay-z they make many albums and like they're just they later albums just do not match up to the beginning um but with him since he died so early all we got was the good stuff so bittersweet <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh it was kind of like odd like it's kind of sad because i go back and listen to some of the music and he's talking about all the cars he wanted to buy all the stuff that he wanted and how he's looking forward to making a life and looking forward to have a kid and a family and then oh, short yeah, then we'll be on notable songs for, for me was kicking the door uh what's beef 10 crack commandments of course and i got a story to tell uh, a story about how he uh he had sex with a basketball player's wife then staged like a way to like he acted like he had the wife under hostage like in a hostage situation so he can escape the house without not without it looking like he cheated looking oh, how can i explain this okay without looking like he was sleeping with the wife yeah and getting mm -hmm. caught cheating yeah he was getting caught kidnapping yeah. so to speak 
I forgot what the basketball player name was, but he played on the Knicks, and it was like, I don't know if it was a true story, but I, I want to know what his name is so I can call him a cuck. Might not be true, but it's a good story. It's a great story. It's a great story. But apparently, some rapper came out and said, yeah, this is the basketball he was talking about. He played on the Knicks, like, in 1994, but I forget. Anyways, you can look that up yourself. What's your number three? Oh, no, yeah, number three, yeah. No, you're number three. Oh, okay. Number three for me is Jay-Z. He made my favorite rap album all time, Reasonable Doubt. That was his first album. Uh, it was pretty fantastic. He was talking about his like teenager years and how he had to like start doing drug dealings and and how he made Rockefeller records off that drug money and how he wanted to make some of himself, which was very a nice story to tell. Um, notable songs: Politics as Usual, Brooklyn's Finest, which contained uh, was featured by Biggie Smalls, where he talked about more about all the stuff he wanted to do with all the money he had. Uh, it's a sad song, but it's upbeat though. Can't Knock the Hustle, uh, Feeling It, Imaginary Players. You notice all those songs on his first two albums. Because they're like, ever since like the Linkin Park collaboration album. Oh, because <laughs> that's a great starting point for anybody. I thought like in 2003. That was, I actually remember liking some of the songs. I haven't listened to it in a while, but I remember liking some of the songs. What really took a downhill for Jay-Z was the uh, R. Kelly collaboration al- album in 2004, which was shitty. Because uh, R. Kelly is like, R&B guy and Jay-Z is like this you know this rap guy and just th- doesn't mix I don't take R. Kelly as a serious threat to anyone I feel like all he's been doing is like being like a soft guy his whole life anyways um but like his recent albums I guess been okay he's just like he's right now I feel like he's like super salty because uh I remember like a couple years ago on a Watch Your Throne one of his songs he like you want the old hoe or buy the old albums like everyone's been doing that like that's like, like we like the old Jay Z better, and like now he's realizing, oh shit, I'm like I'm not as good as I used to be. Let me take all my music down from Spotify and put all my music on the title, so everyone has to go come here. You have to, if you want my old stuff, you have to come to title as well, because well, for a while he's only putting his new stuff on title. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm not buying title. Fuck you. <laughs> all right, what's your number three? Uh, my number three is not so much a person or group, but it's a song. It's mm-hmm. uh, Handlebars by Flowbot. Mm-hmm. It's it's pretty good, pretty yeah. good rap song. It's a pretty good song. For the longest time, I thought that was Eminem singing, but then I said that in front of people and like, what? That's not Eminem, you idiot! And I felt dumb. I'm like, well, Eminem's not that good anyway, so fuck you. Jokes on you. But I do like that song. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you wanna do your number two next? Uh, sure. It's gonna be a bit of a controversial choice, but Twenty One Pilots. <laughs> All right. um, oh, I thought you were gonna get angry. I'm not angry. I think. They're one of the groups that I was talking about. They're not like a rap group, but they have a lot of rap elements in their songs. Mm-hmm. They have, I think their um, their lead man was like, when the poetry doesn't fit in the song, I have to turn to rapping to make it fit, to make it flow, to make it work how I want it to work. Mm-hmm. So that's good. I mean, they'll, Some good songs. They like do multiple genres. I'm okay with that. I mean... Yeah, I'm okay. I'm, I would, like I don't know. People would get mad, but like I'm not a purist about this. I'm, I don't. It's art. You shouldn't be putting it in the box in the first place. Like I'm okay with letting it blend and bleed over to other stuff. So, yeah. my number two is Outcast. Um, fantastic stuff. Uh, my notable songs is Roses, uh, Spody Odie, Dopalicious. Uh, if you don't know, you might not know the uh, title for me to sing it. But basically, it's like, damn, 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 damn. Oh, that one. Yeah, that one. Okay. It's pretty good. Like, no one ever knows the title of that song. But everyone, like, as soon as it comes on, like, oh, wonderful. Bombs Over Baghdad, great song. The Way You Move, uh, and Miss Jackson. I mean, they have, they're, they're, they're curious to me. Because they didn't make that many albums, but they had uh, so many, like, hits. Like, the ratio to hits to actually songs that they had, just, I don't know. It's just it's abnormal. Yeah, it's Above abnormal. Average. And, I don't know, there's a fantastic group. Uh, more in the beginning, they're, like, spoken word over, like, uh, over, not jazz, like. Uh, R&B, sort of. R&B. Like, they kind of blend, like, a lot of, uh, how can I describe this? It's black. They just scream blackness <laughs> to me. Um, but in a good way. Later, my, I got another person I want to talk about. They scream blackness in a more kind of shitty way that I don't like. But Outkast, very good. And it was like, they talk about stuff. They didn't make it like, 
they kind of make his music kind of personal with some uh, songs like Slump, talking about uh, like like certain conditions that uh, black families have, and uh, I don't know. You can go listen for yourself, but all if you just click any random song, you probably like it. They just that's great. They're great musicians, not like one hit wonders or anything. Yeah. So do I do well before I get to one. I got an honorable mention list because it, it was pretty hard for me to get down to five. Um, there's like six people fighting for that five spot. So, do you have you want to do anything before I? Get? I have a couple of honorable mentions, but I'll do that after you. All right. So honorable mention number one is Tyler the Creator. Um, he just I love his metaphors and his music and how like it's not normal at all. It's completely different from anything I heard. Um, one well, rap at least. Um, 3-6 Mafia, the only reason I really like wanted to say anything about them because they made a Slob of My Knob. Fantastic song. <laughs> molded a generation. Uh, also made Mark Henry's theme song for WWE. That was pretty good. What a great title. Yeah. Uh, Wale. He's a, he's a good, solid rapper. Makes a lot of good music. Uh, Kendrick Lamar. <clears throat> Had one really solid album. One fantastic album. One of the best albums ever. Uh, an album before that, 88, no, Section 8 was solid, had a couple good songs, but you know, the song I'm talking about, I mean, album we all know about is like, uh, the one that had Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe, Good Kid, Mad City, that's the name of the album, everyone loves that, but after that, it was To Pimp a Butterfly, I'm like, alright, you got one good song, two, no more than that, then the last album was, uh, was Damn, period, which, uh, I don't know how what critics say, but... Uh, like everyone on Twitter loves it, and well, that's it, the one that dropped like a week ago or whatever. It dropped recently. Weeks. Yeah, recently. Um, I listened to it, and I'm like, yeah, it's fine and all. It's fine. It's fine music. I, I what, what I want to talk about with the blackness thing. I feel like uh, he started getting on this little trip after the the success he had with Good Kid, Mad City. It was like he started saying like weird stuff about how he's a monkey and stuff. I didn't actually get the. The quotes, but it was just so it was so odd. Um, and then he made to pimp a butterfly, which if you don't know, if you just look at the album cover, it was super like, oh my god, white people are like black people are kings and all this, and like white like black empowerment. I'm like, oh Jesus, like stop beating me over the head with your blackness. I get it, I'm black too. And like it's like it's trying to be like social conscious, like socially conscious rap, but just like I feel like this is just made for the age of black Twitter. Like, of course, like a certain subsection. It's like it's made for this section of people that will all rally behind this because it's saying all the things that tickle them so much. Yeah. And not, and the music's fine. It's fine, but they can, he can calm down with like the black empowerment stuff. Just a little bit. Like, you could have, have it like subtle, but you're beating me over the head with it. Like, why do I feel guilty for, for black people's problems and I'm black? Like, that's, that's not good. Where's your black, where's your white guilt? Mark, yeah, I, <laughs> do you have white guilt for your blackness? Like, damn, Kendrick. Like, I, I can only do so much. I'm only one black man. I can't cure everything. Anyways, but his uh, his music did re- resonate with me in 2012, 2013. Whenever that uh, Good Kid, Mad City album came out, it was fantastic. Um, and Tupac, my last honorable mention. He was just a a genius. Um, he also died. Uh, he but cool thing about him. Did he die? Well. I mean, I don't like. He's dead to me. And that's all that matters. He's not making music, so I don't really care. Um, but that, I think that's cool when rappers predict their deaths like he did. Um, I mean, cool is one word for it. Yeah. Also, morbid and sad is another another two words. But uh, other stuff they they said he predicted was the Donald Trump being elected, which I mean, I think we're reaching on that one, and the twin towers falling, which. Uh, you could kind of see that coming, I guess. I need to look at, like, the lines or whatever, what, it, what he was saying that made them think. The Donald good. Trump thing was total reach. <laughs> uh, uh, what else I want to say? Oh, notable song. It was Me and My Girlfriend. I thought it was just a, a nice little song. Like, it kind of surprised me at first because, oh, it's like this tough rapper guy talking about how much he loves his girlfriend and all the stuff he likes to do with her. But then I looked at our rap genius when I found out what that was. Like, it breaks down the lyrics of rap, uh, of rap lyrics. Um, I'm like, oh, he's actually talking about a, a Colt uh, 45, a 1911, how he likes to shoot people with it and kill people on TV, and how he likes to clean it and stuff. I'm like, oh, I thought it's a nice little quaint song, but no, he's going around killing people on TV. But 
Anyway, that's my honorable mentions. What's yours? No, you do your one, and then I'll do my honorable mention. All right, number one, Kanye West. Uh, notable songs for me are Celebration, Touch the Sky, Roses, Champion, and Spaceship. Notice, those songs on his first three albums, there's a theme here. Uh, is that these rappers, they kind of peak with the first stuff. Like, have you noticed that? Is it just rappers or is it, like, all artists? They seem to just have, if it's not a one-hit wonder, it's, like, a one-album wonder. Like, just kind of peter out with everything else. Uh, some, some groups. I can think of quite a few exceptions. Most of what I listen to are actually exceptions to that rule mm. well yeah mm. or i think they're exceptions to that rule okay well m- with most rap i feel like it's really charged with like especially nowadays you just have one good song like uh you remember trinidad james no exactly you remember uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh ray shrimmond he had one good song i've heard the name yeah black beetles is the song they made rich gang one good song um it's like a small two of the rappers just have one good song. Anyway, let's get back to Kanye West. First three albums are great. Talking about college and stuff is co- based on that part of his life and how he wanted to make more of himself. It was similar to Jay-Z, but had like a different uh, different rhythm. It's kind of like a uh, spoken word, some rap, but it was over a beat, of course. Um, but then those first three albums were great. Then he made make 808s and Heartbreaks, and then it was like, ugh. He found out what auto-tune was. <laughs> Ruined a generation between 2005 and 2008. Rough time. You had people like T Pain and you had Kanye, like a what was all other like auto tune rappers? Like T Pain's obviously, well, yeah, T Pain. A Lil Wayne did a lot of uh, auto tune back in the day, like it, it really ruined like a good year of rap music for me. Um, anyways, past 808s and Heartbreaks, he had a couple other albums which are all right. He had Yeezus, which was very jarring to listen to and to like if you read the lyrics you're just like what are you talking about man I don't know um, but you know one what good thing came out of, out of that album was a uh, black skinhead everyone likes that uh that instrumental and they play like at every sports event oh yeah that black yeah. skinhead was uh in my playlist for quite a while one of my playlists mm. and what right now I don't know if he's doing anything oh yeah he made the life of Pablo which was, uh, I don't care anymore. I just, whatever. I'll just appreciate your old stuff. And I won't buy title because he's doing the same damn thing. I'll just go on YouTube and look up those videos, download it to, and bring it to YouTube to mp3.com and put it on my iTunes folder. Yeah. Not pay for music. Anyway, that's all, all my stuff. What's yours? Okay, so my honorable mentions are Tupac and Biggie. What's your experience with them? I haven't. I don't really experience music like a lot of people do. Or I, I don't experience rap. Like, you, you you, have a connection to it, and it's a big part of, like, how you are. What's my connection? What are you assuming? I'm not assuming <laughs> anything. I'm going off what you said. Okay. But, like, I've heard samplings of Tupac and Biggie, um, whether it's, like, documentaries about uh, life in the 90s or used in commercials or movies or stuff. And then I go and look into a couple of the s- songs that I've heard through other means and they, they're they good mm. but it doesn't like I I don't feel pushed to look into it more which isn't a knock on them because like what I've heard is great I just don't care enough to I mean tell you the truth that's me with every artist like their music can be fantastic but I'm just so lazy I'm not going to look at any of your other songs because chances are this is like the, the good one all the other ones or whatever um, like even with like Kanye I, the only reason I know about all those great songs, uh, all the great songs that I like, is because as a kid, I was a captive audience in my mom's car, and she brings me to school and brings me back. She would listen to like, the, full, the full album. I'm like, oh, I, I like this. And then like I would never go out my way to listen to music. And it's very odd. I have like a deep attachment, not to just writings, but, but all music. I like, guess just some powerful relationship that I have. It's not spiritual or nothing, I don't know. But... Uh, I'll never go out my way to go get it for some reason. I don't know. Same with the Reasonable Doubt album. Like uh, the main thing that I, why I like it so much is because not only because the lyrics are good and the messages are good, because my dad will always play that in the car with me. Like that's another connection I have with it. It's kind of like nostalgia with a video game. Like the time when the time in your life where it came, where it came in your life, like also colors it in certain certain way. Yeah. Uh, 
Anyways. My number one is Childish Gambino. I knew Mark was gonna. Oh my god. I don't you know. Yo, because I like Donald Glover as a person. I've seen him as an actor. I've seen him grow as an actor, comedian, rapper. I watched one of his. Got I, a connection to him. I watched a comedic uh, a comedy show. It wasn't that funny. Did not laugh once, okay? I listened to a couple of his songs. I like Redbone. But he didn't sing it. He was like he didn't rap in that, so I'm like, it doesn't really count. I guess. I guess he probably produced it. Well, I know he did, but I still don't, I don't give you credit for that. He didn't do anything. Um, what do you mean he didn't do anything? In he didn't do song? anything on the vocals. It was all that that beautiful black woman doing the vocals, not him. So I don't care. Um, well, he gets the credit for it. So yeah, and um, I listened to like a couple of his music videos. I'm like, uh, whatever. I don't care. Um, uh, songs to notable songs by him are sober. And sweatpants. Mm-hmm. And then I found this really cool mashup between him and 21 Pilots. It's a mix of his uh, heartbeat, I think, and car radio by T.O.P. All right. It's good. I'm more, say, 21 pli- Pilots. Whenever somebody says that, I'm like, Stone Temple Pilots? Like, that's the one I like. Top? You a Top fan? Top? T.O.P. 21 no, Pilots. No, no. Stone Temple Pilots. That's what I was talking about. I'm not a top mm-hmm. fan. Uh, you don't know about Stone Temple Pilots? Not really. It was a rock band like the early 90s. Um, pretty good. Anyways. Should we do like... What's what's your like favorite genre? Favorite genre of music? Yeah. Uh, probably rock. Sl- I mean like the umbrella of rock, but then specifically like alt rock or punk rock. We should do... Uh, is it too much to generalize rock into like doing a top five? I right, some call them rock. Top five rock? I would have so many. I would have so many honorable mentions or, or ties or something like. I couldn't. I mm. couldn't narrow it down to five. All right. Well, Even we, if we split it into alternative and punk, I'd have trouble. Mm. I could do ten easy. Mm. I could also do ten easy too. I don't know. Maybe at some other date. But anyways. That's our top five favorite rappers. It's probably going to change in time. Not only, like, the five that I have in the group. It's not just going to shift places. Because Jay-Z used to be the top one for me. But it's probably, like, if I find a new rapper, or maybe somehow my I get hit on the head and I get a concussion, and then I start listening to Childish Gambino, and all of a sudden I like it for some reason. Maybe he'll be in the group one day. But uh, that's it You're just now. a dick, aren't you? What? <laughs> all right. See you later. Somebody's getting it somebody